Hi, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. We're going to apply the gas laws to stoichiometric calculations for different reactions. Some of you may have already applied molar volume, 22.4 liters equal to one mole. And if you are an IB student, you would see that as 22.7 liters per one mole. You may have already applied that to stoichiometry. That would be at standard temperature and pressure. I am not a big fan of that number. Uh, every year that I grade the AP test, I become less of a fan because students use this at very inappropriate times. This comes from the ideal gas law, and I see students regularly apply it to aqueous solutions and solids and so forth. So not my favorite number, um, but you may have learned that already. We're going to do this instead um, with non-standard temperatures. So in this case, I have two moles of HCl solution and I added it to solid zinc, love this demo, and you make hydrogen gas plus um, zinc chloride that's soluble, so that would be aqueous. So now what I like to do is I like to write out my reactions when I do stoichiometry, and then underneath I provide, this is where I'm gonna list my givens. So <clears throat> the question says, how many liters of hydrogen gas can be collected when my pressure is 750 torr? My temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. Hopefully you are really good at changing that. I'm gonna call that 295.2 Kelvin. Doesn't ask me anything about zinc chloride, so I'm going to ignore that. Tells me I have 40 grams of zinc and I have excess HCl. So this is not a limiting reagent problem. Now, the two of these, my zinc and my hydrogen, relate on a mole to mole basis. So my first step is going to get be to get to the mole road. Then I can go from moles of zinc to moles of hydrogen using the mole ratio. Now, this is where we now have to then jump out of the dimensional analysis and use our ideal gas law. We have pressure, we have temperature, we know R, we will know moles, and then we can solve for our volume. So let me set that up. I'd have 40.0 grams of zinc, I want to get rid of moles, uh, grams of zinc and get to moles of zinc, mass to moles, use molar mass. I'm here. Now I need to go down what I call the mole road. I want to get rid of moles of zinc and I want moles of hydrogen. There is a one in front of the zinc, there is a one in front of the hydrogen. So if I perform that calculation correct, I get 0.6118 moles of hydrogen. So now I can plug that in to my ideal gas law. So I have 750 torr, I don't know my volume, I now know my moles, from my dimensional analysis, R, remember for R, you have to match your pressure units. So that would be 62.4, and then make sure you use Kelvin. Always, 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 Kelvin, Kelvin, Kelvin. Okay, so the volume that I got was 15.0 liters when I solved that. So that's how I would incorporate Pevenard in there. So it's typically going to be a formula and then dimensional analysis or dimensional analysis and then Pevenard. If you lay it out with the givens underneath, um, you should be able to you know, determine that. Let's take a look at another one. Potassium chlorate decomposes. You may have memorized that chlorates decompose to chlorides and oxygen. 
Ionic compounds are solids, unless there's water present, and then all group one would have dissolved, but there's no indication of water present. This wouldn't decompose really in water. Okay, you have to heat the solid up. All right, so now I'm gonna write my givens underneath. I have 7.89 grams of potassium chlorate. Um, and the question is, will a three liter container be able to hold it all? Another way of saying that, well, what is my volume? If my volume is less than three liters, then the answer is yes. If the volume would be greater than three liters, then no. Not if I want to hold the pressure at 700 torr and my temperature at 298.2 Kelvin. Okay, this is the same thing. First, we're going to get to the mole road. Then we got to go moles to moles. In order to go moles to moles, you have to have a balanced equation. So I need a 2 and a 2 and a 3. So then I have 7.89 grams of potassium chlorate. Okay. I want to get rid of grams of KClO3. I want moles of KClO3. Label, label, label when you're doing these stoichiometry because you're going from one substance, KClO3, to another substance. So you want to label those. I get 121.918. I bet I Googled that stuff. <laughs> I tend to Google my molar masses. Okay, then I want to eliminate moles of KCl. O3, and I want moles of oxygen. That's where I will look at my balanced equation. There's a 3 in front of my oxygen, a 2 in front of my KClO3. So that's going to give me my moles of oxygen. So I get 0 0.0971. Moles of oxygen. Okay, so now I'm going to plug that into Pevenard. I'm going to do it up in this corner here because I don't want to erase my whole board on you here. So I have a pressure of 700 torr. I need my volume, my moles we just calculated from the dimensional analysis. My R is the one for torrs, is 62.4 and my temperature is 298.2. And so if I solve for that volume, I get 2.58 liters. So under those conditions, my answer would be yes. Okay, now I wanna kick this up a notch in this final example. And we're not only going to do ideal gas law, but we're going to use density of a liquid. So you have to be really careful with your states when you're doing this. Because remember, the variations of Pevenert are for ideal gases, not ideal liquids, not ideal solids, not ideal aqueous, but ideal gases. So in this case, I have chlorine gas and it reacts with excess lithium bromide. Those are often beautiful terms because that means it's not a limiting reagent problem. Um, I'm going to form liquid, so this is a gas. Bromine's a gas. Um, I'm gonna have, um, probably solid actually, because there's no water here. I'm gonna have bromine liquid, and then I'm going to have lithium chloride. I need to balance that, okay? So now let's list our givens underneath. I have 4.5 liters at 80.0 kilopascals and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, which we want to get right away to Kelvin is 298.2 Kelvin. All right, and then it asks me, how many milliliters of bromine will I form? And it tells me the density. So that tells me that for every 3.12 grams of bromine, I will 
fill up one milliliter. That's another way of writing that so you see clearly the dimensional analysis. Now this time it's not a straight line to moles. It's a formula to moles. But then once we have moles of chlorine, we can use the mole ratio to get moles of bromine. Now, I can't go moles of bromine to a volume. Bromine's not a gas, it's a liquid. What relates volume is the grams. So I first have to go moles to mass, then I can use my density to get up to my milliliters. So this time it starts with PVNERT. So my pressure is 80.0, my volume is 4.5 liters. I need my, vol uh, my moles of chlorine. I have kilopascals, so I'm going to use 8.314 for R. And then my temperature is 298.2 Kelvin. So check all those units. And I get 0 0.145 moles of chlorine. So now I'm at the moles of chlorine. Now I can do my dimensional analysis for the rest of my stoichiometry. I want to go from chlorine to bromine, so I'm going to eliminate moles of chlorine and go to moles of bromine. And that happens to be a one-to-one -one mole ratio. I show it anyway. All right, if you do a finger slip on your calculator, if you're in my class, I can at least give you some partial credit for knowing and recognizing that that is a one-to-one -one mole ratio. Now I have to go from moles of bromine to grams of bromine. So I'm going to eliminate moles of Br2. Remember, it's Br2, so you've got to double that to get 159.81 grams. You've got to double the periodic table mass to get grams of bromine. Now I can use the density of a liquid to get rid of grams of bromine and go to milliliters of bromine because my density, that per milliliter means per one milliliter, so for every one milliliter I would have a mass of 3.12 grams. Um, so when I was done I got 7.44 milliliters of bromine. There you go. Hope that was helpful. Good luck as you merge so many important concepts in chemistry, gas laws, and stoichiometry.